My first ever pet herp, amphibian or reptile, was a frog. But I never had them again for over 10 years. And why is that? Well, pet frogs actually kind of suck. And today we're going to tell you why. My name's Adam. This is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. A special thanks to today's sponsor, Curiosity Stream. So full disclosure, frogs actually can make fantastic pets. It's just a lot of people in the hobby, and I'm gonna call the reptile hobby, I'm gonna include amphibians, because a lot of people keep reptiles, also keep amphibians, frogs, salamanders, newts, things like that. And I think that frogs can make great pets for some people. You guys know I have tree frogs, I love my milk frogs, I've got my dumpy tree frogs or white tree frogs, and I've got a bunch of dart frogs. And I love dart frogs. There's these tiny little skittles that hop around and they're super fun to watch and they're just amazing in their enclosures and they're kind of easy to take care of too, except for some main things. There's three main reasons why I think frogs suck and let's just get into it. The third reason why frogs suck as pets for some people is they're fragile. They're pretty fragile in comparison. Diamond here, sits up here, no problems, no issues whatsoever. I can touch him, I can handle him, I can tickle his little chinny chin chin, you know? And there's no issues. If I did that with a frog, it could be bad news because frogs can take in detergents and oils through their skin. They've got a permeable skin. So they can actually take in water through their skin, which is really cool, unless you forget to miss the enclosure for four or five days, or your misting system runs out of water or malfunctions you don't notice, then your frog can dry out. Now, keep in mind, frogs are variable. There's very many different ones. A waxy monkey tree frog or white tree frog is gonna be okay if you forget to miss for two days, where certain other species, they won't. They'll perish very quickly. So this is something to definitely keep in mind. Every frog is different, and I'm gonna talk about several species in the video, but always do your research first. And some of these, like I said, can do really great and be amazing pets, unless you want a pet that you can handle. Don't get a frog. Sure, dumpy tree frogs or waxy monkey tree frogs, their skin kind of seems like more resistant to deter, things like that. You should always wash your hands anyway. I, If I touch my dumpies, my hands are washed and rinsed thoroughly. But I would never just go around touching my green tree frogs or my red eye tree frogs or my dart frogs because those guys can take in lots of stuff very quickly. And I think that if just in general, blanket statement, don't handle frogs. And in the same vein, these guys are fragile in terms of their health. Now, a lot of them are very robust and have no issues, but with frogs, they're more difficult to treat than other pets. If you have a frog that gets sick, it's much more difficult to mend them in comparison to a lot of other species. Bearded dragons rarely get sick, and when they do, you take them to a vet, and it's kind of easy for certain illnesses, they're all different, of course, to take care of they're going to be resilient and more resistant to a lot of infections and diseases and things like that. Where with frogs, when you notice a sign of illness, a lot of the time, they're already on the way out. Now this is similar to other species of snakes and lizards because reptiles and amphibians in general hide maladies very, very well. But in my experience with frogs, if they get sick, it's very difficult to bring them back and mend them. The number two reason why frogs suck for some people to keep as pets is they're too bold or too shy. Now this could be said with everything, but most reptiles and amphibians don't make the noises that frogs make. I love this actually. This is so this could be a plus for you. I got my uh, Santa Isabel dart frogs because of the sound that they make. I keep them upstairs because I love to listen to them call back and forth. I love when my dumpy tree frogs will call at each other. It's amazing, and they all have variable tones. In fact, my milk frogs, I've got four of them in an enclosure, did a whole video about it right here. Those guys you can hear all night, but they're not so loud and obnoxious that it keeps me awake. Now, if you work a night shift and you wanna sleep during the day, don't get Santa Isabel dart frogs or adult Terribilis dart frogs. They're gonna be so loud and such a high pitch, it's gonna keep you up. And this goes to the shyness or boldness because things like my Santa Isabel dart frogs, they're out all the time. So they're bold, which is great, but they're just too loud for some people. And then there's other species that, sure, they're gonna be calling, but they're gonna be hidden in the foliage all the freaking time and you'll never see them. And there's certain species of frogs that you'll just never see. They're always gonna be hidden. Say, for example, toads are frogs, right? All toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. My spadefoot toads, 
I've, I keep them in a tote because there's no point of doing it any other way. They are just never out. In the wild, they will often stay buried for up to two years until there's rain. So in captivity, it's really no different. These guys will stay buried almost all the time. I never see them unless I dig them out. And most people who want a pet want a pet that they can see or interact with or at least listen to. And if you have something like a spade foot toad, for example, or several species of bullfrogs, they're gonna stay hidden, you'll never hear them. In general, they're boring unless you like to take them out and photograph them. Of course, using a glove, proper hand sanitization if you do this, but they're just, it's not a cat or a dog and it shouldn't be confused that way. Something I do for fun and maybe you're in the same boat is learn. And my favorite way to do that is watch inspiring documentaries and my favorite platform to do that on is CuriosityStream. Whether you're looking for something new or a little bit of nostalgia, CuriosityStream has it for you. I love brand new shows like Doug to the Rescue, a show about a guy who throws a drone up in the air and these areas that have been taken over by disaster, looks for animals like cats and dogs and then goes and saves them. Or if you want some 90s nostalgia, hey, they've got things like Jack Hanna on there. I love The Adventures of Jack Hanna. I watched that show as a kid and now I can watch it again in binge form, not having to wait week after week to kind of relive my childhood and relive the first inspiration for me to be involved in reptiles in the first place. Not only that, but there's documentaries on there about other things too. Technology, science, history. Even last year, I went to Costa Rica and I looked, oh, I bet you there's a Costa Rican documentary on there. And there was. And I learned about a whole bunch of new animals and new things about the country before I went there that I would have never known any other way. And it was super fun because it was a great documentary and really fun to watch. Learning is made fun with CuriosityStream, featuring over 35 curated collections picked by their experts and thousands of different shows and documentaries. There's something on CuriosityStream for everybody. It's the Netflix for nerds. Oh yeah, and CuriosityStream for an entire year, $14.99, $14.99 if you use the code below, WWReptiles, and the link in the description. Right now, go to CuriosityStream slash WWReptiles and get your full year for $14.99. Let's get back to the video. Now a plus for this is most frog species do really well in bioactive enclosures. So all my frogs are in bioactive enclosures. They do absolutely beautifully. They have very beautiful planted enclosures. And some people keep just terrariums of plants and they like that. So if you're one of these people who also likes animals and that doesn't mind looking at terrarium full of plants, then who cares if you only see your red-eyed tree frogs a little bit? I got red-eyed tree frogs right here. Now, all four of them are in view today, which is very rare, but normally yeah, they can only see a few at a time or one at a time, but the enclosure is beautiful, so who cares? It's beautiful to look at, it's living art. And that's why I love dart frogs so much. It's living art with these little skittles hopping around. And the number one reason why frogs kind of suck for some people piggybacks on the fragility. Just the difficulty, the complication in comparison to other things in this hobby. First of all, the water situation, you often need a water feature with a lot of species of frogs. So for example, my Santa Isabels, they have a water feature. It's really important that they have a water feature, not only for breeding, but they like to be around streams and moving water in the wild. So I think that re recreating the wild without the predation and drought and things like that in captivity is what we should all be doing as keepers to the best of our ability. But there are some species like dumpy tree frogs where if you don't even give them standing water, they'll be fine, do always give them standing water. I just mean that they don't have the same humidity requirements. And there's some species of frogs that are just really, really fragile and it's almost impossible to learn anything about them without having some tragedies. So I would recommend if you do get frogs, get animals that are pretty easy to take care of. White tree frogs or dumpies as I've been calling them all video. Uh, red eye tree frogs are pretty easy. Certain species of dendrobates. So tinctorius, dendrobates tinctorius are really easy dart frogs. And the most part, again, do your research. Everyone is different. There is no blanket, but in general, they're just a little bit more difficult. Not only that, but the supplementation. A lot of my animals don't need a vitamin A, but if you wanna breed frogs and you don't have enough vitamin A, the tadpoles will come out and morph out with spindly leg syndrome. There's just so much uniqueness amongst frogs that doesn't carry out. Snakes are snakes in a lot of different ways, right? They're all different, but a lot of things carry you know, along and a lot of things are similar species to species where a lot of frogs are very highly variable. So just because you keep Amazon milk frogs doesn't mean that you could keep red-eye tree frogs or dumpy tree frogs the same way. They're just very, very different. 
So there's more of a learning curve in my experience with frogs and the differences amongst each other, even in similar species, in comparison to lizards or snakes. Not only that, but the breeding is complicated too for a lot of them. Just so for example, a bearded dragon or a ball python, you breed them, eggs pop out, you put them in the incubator, babies pop out and they start eating. With different species, so Santa Isabel dart frogs, we'll use as an example, they'll lay clutches of eggs on the leaves and then the eggs will hatch and then the father will take the tadpole on its back into the water feature and then you gotta raise tadpoles for two or three months and then they're froglets and it's just kind of complicated. Never mind the food situation, right? These little tiny dart frogs, they can only eat things like tiny little isopods or springtails where most lizards and snakes and things like that. I know it's kind of silly to compare amphibians to reptiles, but here we are and we're halfway through the video, so yeah. Those guys are gonna eat much easier prey items to come by. So I just think that there's more of a learning curve. They're a little bit more complicated. There's more involved. And that's why I think those three reasons, frogs kind of suck as pets for some people. So I wanna say thanks. If you made it this far, please hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps this channel. And a special thanks to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. For as little as $1 a month, you get a whole bunch of different perks, discounts on the merch. You know what reptiles in, in my collection that I don't talk about. You're gonna get the reptile room first. You know about this huge program, this huge project that I just started. For as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of that too. And that's it, because I do videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means, oh, the dogs are barking. I'll see you in the next one.